So, so far we've been talking primarily about deterministic algorithms, which means at any point in the algorithm, there's a definite next step. But there's a very large class of algorithms which are very useful, uh, which aren't this, which are called randomized algorithms. In randomized algorithms, at any point in the computation, the algorithm can decide to flip a coin, and then the output of that coin is some bit, zero or one, and then it can decide what to do next based on that bit. And it can flip as many coins as it likes. So um, to formally talk about randomized algorithms, you have to modify the definition of Turing machine or algorithm slightly, but that modification is quite easy. You just add an extra state, which allows it to flip a bit and then write the output of that bit to the tape, for example. Um, many randomized algorithms tend to be simpler than the simplest known deterministic analog. Um, and I want to show you a couple examples of that. So we're going to start with sorting again. So just to recall, the input here will be a list, let's just say for simplicity, of numbers. And the goal is to output the same list in sorted order. Um, and the randomized algorithm I'm going to show you is called quicksort. And this algorithm is actually, it's so simple and it performs so well that uh, some variant of this algorithm is what's used in most modern programming languages if you call the sort function. Um, some variant of quicksort is what's being used. Okay, so the idea of quicksort is you have a list of numbers and you're going to randomly pick a number from this list. So let's say I happen to randomly pick seven. Okay. And just to be clear, what does randomly pick mean? Because we didn't say that the algorithm has the ability to randomly pick numbers, it has the ability to randomly flip coins. Well, this list has length six, so it flips three coins, which gives it three bits, so there are eight possibilities. And it, you know, it assigns each of those possibilities, the first six possibilities to this. If it gets the last two possibilities, it flips again. Okay. So picking from a list is something, picking randomly from a list is something that a randomized algorithm can very easily do. So quicksort randomly picks from a list and it calls this the pivot. And then what it does is it scans through the list and it's gonna put all of the other numbers in one of two buckets, depending on whether they're less than the pivot or greater than the pivot. So in this case, we scan through one is less than the pivot, three is less than the pivot, five is less than the pivot, and 21 is greater than the pivot. Okay, so now what we have is we have the pivot, seven. We have the list of all numbers that are less than the pivot and the list of all numbers that are greater than the pivot. Um, and then the algorithm recursively calls quicksort on each of these. And that's it, that's the whole algorithm. So as you see, it's a very simple algorithm. The analysis is a little bit tricky, but not very tricky. So again, as with merge sort, which we saw earlier, the question is essentially, um, how many times do you have to find a pivot? Right? Each time you find a pivot, you scan through the list once, so that if your list has length n, that's a cost of n. So the question is, how many pivots do you have to look for? And the answer is, well, in the worst case, like you could have picked a really bad pivot. That could happen. You could have picked one as your pivot. And then you would have picked one as your pivot, and then you would have nothing less than it, and the rest of your list would be greater than it. Uh, so in that case, you just reduce the size of the list by one. You might have to do that n times. So in the worst case, quicksort takes order n squared operations, which is no better than the naive bubble sort that we saw. But on average, this is really not expected to happen. Because for example, say you wanted to, uh, you might hope, for example, that your pivot is in the middle 90% of the numbers. Right? What's the probability that it's in the middle 90% of the numbers? 90%, pretty simple. Okay, so the probability that your pivot is in the middle 90% of your numbers is 90%. That's pretty good. Um, and if it's in the middle 90%, then, you know, in the worst case, you're splitting your list into 5% of the list and 95% of the list. Okay, but the point is 95% is still a constant fraction of the list. So the number of times you have to do the pivot is log of n, with, where the base here is no longer 2, but is 1 over 95%. Um, but in terms of order of growth, 
this is still the same as order log n, which since each scan through the list takes n, this gives us, again, an order n log n expected time with high probability. And this is usually the kind of thing we're looking for in a randomized algorithm. You want it to be simple, because if the deterministic algorithm was simpler, you might as well use the deterministic algorithm. You want it to be fast, because again, if the deterministic algorithm is faster, you might as well use that. And you want it to work and be fast with some sort of guaranteed high probability. Okay, so this is our first example of a simple, fast, correct, with high probability randomized algorithm.